Mission Jayara. This is the 54th episode of Diksha Mission Jayara. I hope you haven't missed any of our previous videos. We are glad to inform you that we have launched our paper one live classroom. It's a live course. To know more about the course, you can visit our page www.dikshaclassroom.com. So in this episode, we are going to discuss the previous year question of research aptitude, which have appeared in the examination. Second December 2019 afternoon shift. So let's start. Hello everyone. So again, welcome to Diksha classroom. So in this video, we are going to discuss the questions that have appeared from the topic of research aptitude in the afternoon shift, second December paper one examination. So let's start. This is question number one. Let's look at it. Identify the tests from the list given below, which are maximum performance tests in the context of research. Six options are given. You have to select the code containing the correct one. Personality test, projective personality test, achievement test, aptitude test, intelligence test and aptitude test. In order to answer these type of question, first you have to know which types of tests are present in research context. So in this question, the keyword here is the maximum performance test. So let's get a detailed understanding about what maximum performance tests are. You must know there are many types of tests present. Many categories and many classifications are present in the topic of test. Among them, two main categories are maximum performance test and typical response test. So, tests can be divided into two different types, maximum performance test and typical response test. Here, maximum performance test, it is designed to test the limits of the person's knowledge and abilities. That means this test is aimed at finding out an individual's knowledge and abilities. It can either be correct or incorrect. So there are many examples for maximum performance test. That is the important part you have to study in the category of test. So examples of maximum performance tests which aim to measure an individual's knowledge and abilities are achievement and aptitude test, then speed and power test, then objective and subjective test. So once again, in the first category, maximum performance test, which is aimed at measuring one's knowledge and abilities. Examples are achievement and aptitude test, speed and power test, objective and subjective test. Now get a brief idea about each of these examples. The first one, achievement and aptitude test. You might be familiar with this term achievement and aptitude test. Achievement test measures skills in which instruction has been previously provided. It assesses knowledge of information we have been taught. And these type of tests are directly tied to instructions. That is how achievement tests are done. Then aptitude test, the second part, it measures one's cognitive ability, such as one's problem solving capacities, decision making capacities, or skills such as numerical ability, verbal ability. These type of skills, are, skills and cognitive abilities are measured in aptitude test. So the difference between achievement and aptitude test is that achievement is measure how much we learn something or how much knowledge we have about something. But in aptitude test, it measures a total cognitive capacity of an individual. Now the second part, speed and power test. Speed test is concerned with performance, reflect how quickly can they perform a task. So speed test is all about how quickly or how fast an individual can perform a task. But in power test, it is just the opposite. 
power test assesses the underlying ability of the individual by allowing them sufficient time these tests do not have any time limit like speed test the items in power test are generally arranged in an increasing order of difficulty but in speed test all the items are of the same degree of difficulty that is the difference between speed and power test you can understand it simply as speed test is time bounded power test is not time bounded now comes the third one objective and subjective test Objective tests are concerned with when scoring does not require subjective judgment. For example, multiple choice test this is an example of objective type of test. When it is subjective test, it requires some subjective judgment. For example, essay test are examples of subjective test. So you can understand it as objective test does not focus on the subjective evaluation of the participant but in subjective test it's all about one subjective feelings experience and knowledge so that is the difference between objective and subjective test so as you can understand these are the three examples of maximum performance test now moving to the second one typical response test the specialty of typical response response test is that it measures things like one's personality behavior attitudes or interest the main category in typical response test is the objective and projective personality test this is the example of typical response test objective and projective personality test both objective and projective test measures one's personality if you are using objective test in order to measure one's personality we'll be using already written statements and questions in a questionnaire form that will be objective thing if you are using projective personality test it will be using ambiguous materials ambiguous pictures in order to understand one's unconscious personality conflicts and features so objective so objective personality test mostly make use of questionnaires and things but in projective test it uses ambiguous pictures and cues example of objective test are mmpi which measures one's personality and there are many other inventories and questionnaires in objective test which make use of true and false statements now example of projective personality personality test are tat which is the abbreviated form of thematic up perception test so these are two examples of objective and pers uh, projective personality test so that's a, that's the idea about maximum performance test and typical response test i hope you understood the difference in maximum performance test we measure a person's knowledge and abilities examples are achievement aptitude test speed power test objective and subjective test but if it is typical response test it is aimed at measuring one's personality behavior attitude and interest not one's knowledge or cognitive capacity examples include objective and projective personality test now getting back to the question here we know the question is about the first category maximum performance test you have to find out the option which can be included under maximum performance test so as we have discussed we can include three test in maximum performance test from these options which are achievement test intelligence test and aptitude test achievement test intelligence test and aptitude test don't get confused intelligence test also measures one's knowledge and cognitive capacities not one's personality or attitude that is why intelligence test is included under maximum performance test so 3 5 and four or uh, six i'm sorry six are selected the correct option will be then the option containing the codes 3 5 and 
So the correct answer will be option C. Now moving to the next question, question number two. Which of the following research is cyclic in nature? Fundamental research, applied research, action research and evaluative research. It's a very simple question. If you have read through the previous year questions of research aptitude, it is the most frequently occurring question, most frequently appearing question from research aptitude. We can say the only main research type which is cyclic in nature is action research. Action research. You have to study this part very carefully. Action research is very important in research aptitude topic because there are so many questions in the previous year examination that have appeared in this from this particular topic action research so you have to consider this topic very carefully okay now let's discuss why action research is cyclic in nature so first we have to draw a cyclic diagram here which constitute the action research the very first starting stage of action research is the observation stage or we can say observe is the first action in action research. As the name itself suggests action research is essentially research through action. So in order to act what we have to do first is to observe. Now. The second stage is reflect. It is the second step in the cycle. In reflect step, we'll be focusing on what does it mean about a problem. That is, in observe stage, we were answering the question, what is happening? When it comes to the second stage, reflect, we'll be answering the question, what does it mean? Now, the third one comes, which is the plan stage. Plan stage. The plan stage is concerned with answering the question, what do we want to change? What do we want to change? Then, the fourth one comes, which is the act stage of action research. It is concerned with the answering what are we doing or what we are going to do with it and if the action is not successful or if it is not satisfied satisfactory we'll be moving to the first stage again we'll start observing the thing again so this is how action research is done so once more action research is a cyclic cyclical research which, cons which consists of four different stages the first thing we have to do is to observe what is happening the second stage is to reflect what does it mean the third stage is to plan what do we want to change then the fourth stage is to act what are we doing so of course this is a cycle that is why it is known as the action research. So, correct answer will be option C. I hope you understood the idea. Moving to the next question. Question number 3. This is also a code question. So, you have to read it carefully. Let's read. The issue of research ethics become relevant in which of the following stages of research? Problem selection. Hypothesis formulation, hypothesis testing, data analysis and interpretation, defining of research population. So there are five codes given. You have to select the option containing the correct codes. So let's find out what is the key theme here in the question. The issue of research ethics. Specifically, this question focuses on the research ethics part. Research ethics is an important part in research aptitude module. We have discussed it in very detail in our paper one online course. We know ethics are the moral values that have to be keep, keep in mind by the researcher while doing a research. 
There are so many principles and guidelines that have to be followed by a researcher while doing a research. And the research ethics part, the value part is most important while we are testing our hypothesis and doing the data analysis and interpretation. That is, ethics become most relevant in hypothesis testing, data analysis and interpretation stages. The hypothesis is tested through analyzing the data we collected and interpreted. The core of the research process lies in these two stages. These are the most concerned area where manipulations can occur. So these are the two stages in which there is a high chance for manipulation. And manipulation is certainly not a research ethics. If you are manipulating our data while testing our hypothesis, if you are manipulating the research result, if you are manipulating the result of the study while interpreting those information we have go through, data collection, all of these are examples of violating research ethics. Therefore, issues of research ethics become significant in these two stages, hypothesis testing, data analysis and interpretation. As in the other options, the stages of problem selection, hypothesis formulation and defining research population do not have any significant ethical concerns. So the correct answer will be the option containing code number 3 and 4, which is option B. So these are the first three questions that have appeared from the topic research aptitude in 2nd December 2019 afternoon shift examination. And there are three other questions also which have appeared in the same. We'll be discussing it in the coming video. Thank you. So that's it. These are the first set of research aptitude questions in 2nd December afternoon shift examination. The next set of the questions will be discussed in the next video. I hope your preparations are going well. You can get more study materials, sample tests and many more through our broadcast system. So far we have broadcast system for various subjects such as paper 1, psychology, economics, commerce and social work. You can avail and you can join those broadcast system by texting join to this particular number. Thank you.